Hi folks, Captain Carl Burns out here, Thumbs Up Charter Services. Welcome to the episode I'm dubbing the Lost Episode because we started filming it back in early December and kind of forgot about it and I'm really sorry about that. This is the 12 volt wiring of the Ambrose where we start putting the wiring in the boat. And we hope you enjoy the episode and uh, as you can see we're indoors today because it's like 10 degrees outside, sunny day, but really not conductive to working on a boat out in the barn. So stay warm, enjoy the video, pay attention to the end if you're one of our fishing fans because we're going to have some details about what we're doing this spring and for the 2022 season. We'll see you soon. Hi and welcome to another episode of Thumbs Up Charter Services Behind the Scenes. Well, in this episode we're going to start working on the DC side, of the electrical side of the boat. Um, working on our bus, what we call our bus circuits right now. And uh, what you can see here is we've got some flexible conduit laid out. We've got our power and grounds ran through that conduit. Um, we have them labeled, um, each circuit labeled power bus one through power bus four and ground bus one through ground bus four. And, you know, you really don't need to do that if you're doing your own boat, but it makes it easier for our inspectors um, actually, the inspectors kind of require it so that they can trace wiring through the boat when they do our commercial inspections. I guess one advantage you could get out of it is it makes life easier if you're dealing with a lot of wires, which end is what and at what end. There you go. My advice for the day from the captain. But we're using uh, six gauge wire here. And uh, the definition of a bus or a power bus, there's, there's really two kinds in the world. I mean, generally speaking, there's probably more, but the two most common type are a power bus line or power line and then a bus bar. And basically what a bus means is it is a uh, circuit of usually a large diameter or gauge wire. Yes, it's dog down there. Large diameter, larger diameter gauge wire that transports a lot of current um, from one location to another. In this case, we're taking it from batteries up to the front of the boat to run the helm where all the electrical devices are terminated and are controlled. A bus bar is something that you would find in a circuit breaker box. And it's just a long bar of metal that all your circuit breaker breakers click into. And it's, it's basically used to carry heavy ampers to the individual branch circuits. Um, and out to the rest of the house or building or whatever it might be. So, anyways, uh, we are using, like I said, wire that is uh, marine grade wire that is tin. It's copper wire that is tin, and that's it's pretty important for longevity and to prevent uh, what we call tunneling corrosion, where moisture gets into this insulation and starts corroding on the inside of here because moisture can't get out. And if you just got bare copper wire in there over a period of years that could cause some real problems. So, as I alluded to in the last video, I'm gonna to try to find some standard copper wire that was used in the boat. I think I have some back here, and we'll, we'll take it apart and see if we can find some of that corrosion so you can see it firsthand. We've got our uh, bus lines into the boat here, the two that we made. Um, total of four conductors and four grounds. We're now gonna start feeding them up into the gunnel, and they will run along the starboard side gunnel here along with the other control hardware, running back to that corner that I showed you in the previous video that had the 440 amp circuit breakers. They're gonna come up to the helm, and they're coming through the side because we've already pre-drilled holes in the uh, support, wood supports for this helm, and we'll be able to pull the wiring in around to the corner and to the side, underneath the dash where it's gotta be hooked up to the, to the switch panels. Pulling the bus line through the side of the helm on the starboard side until we get it underneath the dash. As 
So this conduit's going to be fixed up here into the gunnel. We've got to slide it behind the new tank for the moment. And we're just roughly positioning these in. There we go. We've got one more to put in here and we'll be good to go. I'm outside of the boat right now, as you can see. I guess I didn't need to tell you that. But um, <coughs> here's our uh, bus lines we brought down the boat just a moment ago. And I've been working on putting um, ends on the, each cable. So red wires with power, they go to each individual circuit breaker. And then the green ones, of course, are going directly back to the battery negative terminal. So each one of the red wires has an individual eyelet that we're putting on. And then we will pair the grounds and twos and use a larger end eyelet that will fit down on the marine uh, battery post, which is the threaded post. So I started doing these and I said, gosh, I better show you guys this because it's probably a interesting step that you would want to see and um, here's our eyelet it's for 8 gauge wire and I said 6 gauge earlier I'm using 8 gauge uh, I'm getting old but what I've done is I've pulled back about a half inch of insulation and what I'm going to do next on these is I'm going to put a p appropriate diameter piece of shrink tube that I've cut right here and I'm going to feed that down the wire before I put my end dial it on and we'll get a nice finished product by doing that keep the moisture out of this connection so we just slip it on down the end of the wire a little difficult you gotta get it going I gotta pinch and pull once you get it on, slide it down far enough or far enough away that this, you know, you keep it away from the heat so it doesn't shrink itself here while you're working on the end. And I crimp and solder these. So I suppose there's a crimping tool somewhere in the world that's appropriate, but in this case I found, and I make my own battery cables too from time to time, um, depending on what the unique length is. So I've got a whole bunch of different one of these. Um, in my little copper um, kit for making special harnesses. And I simply just use a standard pair of ice grips <clears throat> that I've adjusted to crimp it to the desired crimp. And I just slide the cable in. Actually, it's a little bit long. Let's give her a little bit of a trim. I want a little bit of the wire want a little bit of a gap between the insulation and the end of that eyelet. That's to help feed the solder in. <clears throat> I don't want the end of the eyelet. I don't want the end of this eyelet up against the insulation. Because then I can't feed the solder in. And you got a piece of shrink wrap going over it anyway. So that looks like this should be appropriate. Simply grab my Eyelet and the end jaws of the vice grips. Put my wire in. And give her a crimp. So now that it's crimped, what I'll do is take a torch. I'm going to heat the end of this because obviously copper, copper is a great conductor of heat. We'll keep it away from the insulation, the tor torch pointed away, and I'll feed the solder in here around this gap that we've got right here. And I figured I'd show you one of these. You've seen it done a million times. You can just repeat the video if you need to see it again. really don't want to start our insulation on fire, but it doesn't take very long, as you can see, with the torch. Start being able to get this hot enough to feed our solder into the end of it. We just fill the end of that right up 
that. Then we gotta let it cool. So the next step you'll see is after it cools, we'll slide this uh, shrink wrap down over the end of it, and make it look like the rest of them. This line is, uh, this wire's cooled down from our soldering job here. We're gonna take the uh, shrink wrap and just slide it right over it, like that. Then we're gonna take our propane torch again. You can use a heat gun for this too. I, did, I have one, but it's up there. I'd be a little cautious about using a propane torch to this unless you've done it a few times. Turn it down low, and it doesn't take much to get this to actually shrink wrap for you. Just a little bit back and forth, kind of like that, and you're done. So that'll help keep water and moisture out of there and dirt and gosh knows what else, right? Can't contact anything to short out. So I was waiting for that to cool. I've started working on our larger, uh, with our larger uh, cable ends that are going to go on to the battery itself and uh, be in the ground. And same thing, but I skinned these back about an inch and an eighth because uh, it's a larger um, end piece. Crimped it down. We're going to heat this up. Let's put these in there for now. Give me some room here. Heat this up, and I don't have shrink wrap big enough for this, so what I will do with this is I'll use a good quality electrical tape to wrap it. But uh, I can't stress enough about good electrical tape. I happen to use the 3M stuff. It's good stuff. The, you know, five and dime stuff, yeah, it works for today, but in six months, if you go back under and look at some of your work, it'll be coming off for you. And what good is that? I don't like to go back and do things two times. Maybe you do, I don't. So we just gotta get this hot. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. I take a little bit more time here. Yeah. Pretty quickly, regardless. I just wanna fill that in with our solder, but not melt the insulation. that cool down we'll come back and we'll wrap this connection up with some good electrical tape and then we'll do our final ground there and these cable ends will be ready to slide back in the boat and put in the service things have cooled off we've got our tape on the ends of these grounds in place of uh, the shrink wrap because like I said we didn't have the right diameter which is okay, that tape is very good tape, it'll work. So now all these connections will get pushed back into the boat. Watch the paint job. And we'll go on the inside and we'll start hooking some things up there. If you remember back on our uh, trailer session, trailer wiring, most trailer wiring kits, in fact I haven't ran into one yet that uses the tin wiring uh, like the boat wiring does. But all the wiring we're putting in this boat is tinned. So you can actually skip a step here because it is tinned. If you remember on the boat uh, trailer wiring I like to use the dielectric grease which is right there. A little, little bit on each wire just to help prevent the copper from corroding. You don't have to worry about this on the tin wire because it's tinned. So with Skinner wires here, I call it skinning, it's stripping, I don't know, maybe it's a Midwest thing, maybe it's just a Captain Carlism, who knows. Uh, in this case, it looks like, it's always good to find out what's what. Okay, yeah, the brown wire is positive, the yellow is negative, and we're going to put on a butt connector here, crimp it. Another butt connector here for the ground. Of 
crimp it. Then we got to bring up our uh, wiring for the power and ground. And in this case, the power is red, ground is black. There's not really no rhyme or reason sometimes to how manufacturers of uh, boat equipment color their wiring. Just pay attention to um, how they've labeled it, like they did on this pump. They told you that the brown was positive. I ran into that brown positive thing a couple of times, especially on blower motors, exhaust fan blower motors for the bilge. They seem to be a common color code for that. I guess in the manufacturing industry. That and uh, uh, sometimes bilge pumps are that too. A lot of times they're brown for power for whatever reason. But uh, we will get some wiring ready to go here. And it's a simple matter of stripping or skinning the wires. Like we said, black is going to be negative on this one. Always have a good pair of wire skinners around too. Good quality pair. I've had these for years. They work quite well. Multi-function tool as you can see. You do all kinds of crimping depending on what kind of fastener you have. The various different types of fasteners used in the electrical world. And that one's crimped. We take our heat gun, set her on high, warm up a minute here, and we'll close up this shrink tubing, and this connection will be done. So we're working on our wiring this morning. Again, we're in the transom area. I'm using the doghouse cover here for the engine as a uh, nice little work table. You see we got our exhaust, bilge exhaust blower fan in here. We've got the, the wiring uh, cut and crimped and shrink tubed. And that line comes back here, branches out with another one. That This one here goes up to our transom light that one's done and then this here is a ground a ground path uh, to close the switch uh, that goes up to our uh, auto fire suppression system and what that does is it lets us know with an alarm and a light um, if the bottle has started to discharge honestly on this size of the boat I probably know it already because I'd be hearing it back there not too far away from it but what I like to do is start at the transom here, do the wiring I need to do. We got to get the bilge uh, wiring in here for the bilge pump. And I like to gather that wire up and start at the transom and put it into its harness and make the harness as I go. And I push the slack towards the front of the boat. So we got our sending unit wiring there for that tank. And I push it that way. Up into the dash so all the excess ends at the dash so I'm not short and then I can trim from there for wherever it's got to go if it's got to go to circuit breaker panels or gauges or whatever it has to has to do so we got our new uh, blower fan in here for the bilge blower come under here got a nice chrome cap on it and up under here, our fan is mounted, as you can see. Got our wiring attached. We'll have to uh, <clears throat> get the looms ready to get strung up here and fasten to the transom and then up the gunnel. And right now, we are working on ground wiring for the dash. What we've made here is a ground harness for all the gauges. It's a common ground. We've got six gauges in a cluster. Each one of these will ground the gauge. Then we've got one here, it goes up to the tachometer. And then we've got a female spade connector that goes to the 
common ground bar underneath the dash. So we're going to heat shrink these up, get them on the gauges, and get the gauges lined up in the dash. And okay, here's all of our gauges. We've got fuel, trim, fuel, I think temperature, oil pressure, volt. Then up here we got a tachometer. Each one of these smaller gauges has a bracket that goes over the center stud to hold it in place on the back of the dash. That center stud is also a ground, so we got to hook the ground wire to it with this nut with a serrated lock washer. We'll do that to each of these, but I won't tighten them up until Karen can get out front here and tell me which way to turn these to get them level on the front of the helm or the dash. Then up here, there's a large bracket that goes over this tack, but that's, these are not the ground studs. That is the ground stud. So a wire will have to, ground wire have to go on there with a, with a nut and lock washer to tighten it up uh, and put it into place. Then we'll ground this entire thing over to a ground terminal bar I have over here on the right that you can't see. We'll show you that when we get there. We've got everything mounted in here, all the ground wires hooked up, the retaining brackets on but loose. Got our tack in place with this bracket and the ground wire on the particular lug. And if you look at the back of this tack, it's important to note there's some adjustments back here. That little dial switch right there, that big black dial switch that looks like a clock on the right, that's what cylinder selection you have to make. And you put a screwdriver in there and turn it to the appropriate engine uh, number of cylinders that you have. They might have stuff on there for inboard and outboard too two or four stroke. And then uh, that top lug up there is for the light, for the dash light. And then you got the sending unit, which would come from your coil, ignition coil. And then uh, ignition is your power. So at this point, we got our ground wire here. We're gonna come over here. Here's our switch panels on the outside. And I have a ground bus bar set up here. And then I have a whole bunch set up there with our bus lines going to it. This one is going to be exclusively used for the main engine ground in the factory harness. And like I said, all of our gauges are being hooked up to the factory wiring harness. So we just got to take this ground wire here. We just got to take this ground wire here and uh, push it on to one of the terminals. And we'll come back later, of course, and so we get more wiring in here and put uh, restraints and things in here. Okay, we got our power lines hooked in from our bus lines that are appropriately marked. These are 40 amps each. And as you can see, they go into the back of these switch panels. And we got a bus line here, bus line here. Bus line here and here as well. We have four bus grounds up here that will go directly back to battery. We've got another harness here we just are putting together. This one is for the gauges again. It's for the uh, nighttime instrument lighting. We just made up a, a couple of short power bus connectors here going from our main battery switch selection switch that'll go to each one of the four individual uh, 40 amp circuit breakers in the transom to uh, power up those circuits going to the front helm of the boat just made up another power harness for our gauges and this one's going to go to the ignition switch uh, key on ignition switch to power the gauges up when we turn the ignition on how our harness straps work is it's just a simple piece of uh, non-metallic flexible uh, plumbing strap that we saddle the wires in and we put this in on the back side of the gunnel. The rivet goes through the gunnel so the gunnel is here on this side. Then on the back side what we do 
once it's all assembled with the harness in it, is we put a little bit of a strain relief here. Let's see if we can get this on here. I'm holding the camera. Put a strain relief on here in the form of a washer. So when we pop that rivet through, it cannot pull through the strap. And it looks like at this point I've got to do it, uh, it looks like in five places. One here. I'm going to try to utilize these existing holes too. One here, skip a hole, one here, skip a hole, one here, skip a hole, one there, and then one down there before there's actually a under support that that wire is laying up on uh, through the rest of the gunnel up to the uh, helm area. So I think five straps should do it. Our next step in the uh, dash wiring, we're going to start working and getting this uh, factory mirror cruiser wiring back in. And this is the wiring pigtail that goes underneath the dash. So this cluster of connections here goes to the gauges. That's the main ground. That'll go to our ground terminal under the dash. There's another sub pigtail comes off, goes up to our ignition switch, which we've installed a new ignition switch with a set of keys which would be really nice, start the boat. This pigtail here plugs into this factory harness here. It's like a big extension cord. You can see I got it running down the boat now up to the dash. And uh, we'll plug all this in and the, the receiving end of it right here plugs into the engine. So it's like a nice umbilical, we'll come back around here, go down in and plug this way into the engine when we get there. Nice thing was, is uh, we moved the helm on this boat, and I was worried about the length of this harness, but as it turns out, looks like Maricruiser uh, provided a 22-foot harness for this boat, and probably about six feet of it were not being used because of where the helm was, so I just unrolled it and measured it, and we have got a good length right to the engine, so we didn't have to splice or lengthen this, this umbilical which I'm really glad for because I, I just don't like doing stuff like that. So we're going to work on the dash here and get this uh, harness up and underneath and hooked up to all the gauges. We've got all the wiring mapped out, know where each terminal goes, the gauges. And uh, then we'll pull this harness along uh, up into the gunnel with the rest of the wiring. And it'll go around the corner and down uh, into the engine bay. You should be able to see under here, I'm going to flip you up, that I got the wiring harnesses there in the blue and the black um, tied up and into the gunnel. And we've got it secured with straps. In fact, you can see a strap on here. Where am I? Oh, you can see a strap right there. And uh, that's what we're going to attach this umbilical to uh, with some zip ties all the way down. Then eventually we're going to need to support this uh, steering cable that's running laying here on the back side of the floor here up in there too. But we're going to use, that's so heavy, we're going to use a separate set of straps for that. And you got to leave those loose. You can't hold on to them real tight because they do need to move a little bit as you steer. And uh, just the sheer weight of it, we're going to hang that independently by its, on its own. In the beginning of our video, we talked about uh, the difference of wiring, copper wiring versus tin copper wiring. And the fact that standard copper wiring can lead to corrosion underneath the insulation when it's exposed to uh, moisture and temperature differences over a long period of time. And as you can see here, this copper here has not really been affected yet. Uh, by having moisture intrusion or tunneling type corrosion that gets in capillary effect of moisture getting into that insulation and coming in here and corroding the wire where this wire here has see how dark it is and actually that's not the the worst I've ever seen this is in the early stages of failure because of moisture intrusion into the insulation or under the insulation this will become, if this was allowed to progress, it will become completely black, almost like the wiring sheath itself. And then in advanced stages, it would almost have a rose gold appearance to it, like a pinkish copper appearance to it. And if you ever see that, it will be mixed with black, and then eventually when it gets so bad, it will just all be kind of that rose gold color, or pinkish color. You can actually probably at that point, without much effort, take the 
wire, bend it a little bit, and the strands will break off, and that's complete failure of the wire. So, you know, any corrosion in, in wiring is a bad thing. Adds resistance over time. This the resistance will increase because of the corrosion. That eventually leads to, you know, um, electronics or accessories not working correctly. But it also, in higher amperage circuits or higher load circuits, will lead to a heat buildup. And I don't think I have to explain too much why we don't want that. Uh, that will eventually uh, result in, uh, if it was bad enough, uh, smoke or a fire or something like that. So this is why, why really today modern boats they use tin, tin uh, copper, copper or tin coppered wire. Excuse me. Um, it's not a bad thing if your boat has just plain old copper wire in it. After all, this didn't come out of the boat. Um, and back in the day, that's what they used. It's just a matter of making sure that the ends where these terminate don't have the ability to be exposed and allow moisture to accumulate and come down this insulation against the wire. And you do that through the use of, like, um, you know, uh, shrink tube connections and dielectric grease in the fitting and things like that to prevent that from occurring. And uh, good solid connections there. Uh, that are sealed to make sure that uh, the moisture can't get in there in the first place. We hope you enjoyed today's Thumbs Up Charter Services episode behind the scenes, the lost episode on the 12 volt wiring of the Ambrose. Um, hopefully you got some good tips out of that and uh, maybe it's going to help you with the project that you're doing. Now we mentioned, um, you know, it is 2022. Happy New Year everybody. Um, some of our new uh, things and exciting things we got coming up. We're going to be working on the gimbal unit for that boat, rebuilding it, putting in the gimbal bearing. I know a lot of people are interested in stuff like that because it always seems when you talk to folks, you're like, oh my gosh, my gimbal bearing went out. Well, you're going to see one and see how to install one. Bellows as well, uh, hydraulic hoses on the, on the uh, gimbal unit, all kinds of good stuff. We also are going to be building our own um, downrigger transom bar for the back of the boat. So we can mount all four of our downriggers on it. And uh, downrigger transfer bars seem right now in COVID to be almost non-existent. Um, looking at some of the major manufacturers and can't find them, and the ones that I do find are obnoxiously expensive. So we're going to show you how to do that for a couple hundred bucks and actually make it look nice too. So there's a couple of highlights of a few of the videos that will be coming up. And of course, we're going to show you those um, uh, rod holder adaption, the Big John rod holder adaption to the uh, Fish On Sports radar arch. we still got to do that. We're still waiting for those parts to come in. So bear with us here for a couple weeks, and we'll have some good videos coming to you. Uh, quick announcement about our 2022 season. We are taking reservations. Um, you can find it out there on our Facebook page. We post it at the top of our page. We'd love to hear from you. Love to schedule you for a 2022 charter out of Sea Wing or Harbor Beach, Michigan. And uh, we also, this spring, are pretty excited that we're going to be working with the DNR in the month of May to tag walleye in Saginaw Bay. So hopefully we'll have some video and things of that coming up when we start doing that. We'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube page because we do provide fishing uh, reports throughout the year, a weekly fishing report. And by subscribing, of course, uh, you'll be notified uh, when our new videos come out. And also, we're going to do some promotions out there, we think, this year. We can't tell you what those are, but if you do want to go fishing with us and you happen to drop by, there might be some things there for you to save a little cash to come out and see Captain Carl. Well, until next time, we really appreciate you. And at Thumbs Up Charter Services, remember, we are wild for walleye. Visit us at thumbsupcharter.com on the web or on Google at Thumbs Up Charter Services in Seaboy or Harbor Beach, Michigan. Thanks again, folks. Take care. Have a great day.